Hello, what's up folks? We're going to be uh, doing a little unboxing and talking about a uh, new toy of mine for backpacking, a Trangia 27. I got the Duo Sal. So if you're watching this, you're probably kind of curious about it. Uh, I guess I'll talk about it a bit. There's a lot of different Trangia sets and uh, we'll go over that I think a bit, even though I'm no authority on the subject. And then I got one of the burners. So, uh, one of the gas burners. I got a knockoff burner from Amazon. We'll take a look at that. We might even do a little lighten up in here and see if we can burn down the place. So, so here we go. This is what we're working with today. Obviously, in the interest of full disclosure, I have already opened these. So it's not technically an unboxing video. It's going to be me taking stuff out of boxes. So I guess it's unboxing. We'll open the big one first. So I think I paid about a hundred bucks for the Transio, and I got the little fuel bottle that goes with it. And uh, I think it was a hundred, maybe more. A lot of money for a camp stove, honestly. But I've always wanted one of these, and I've got a pretty good collection of camp stoves. And 30 years of backpacking, I've never bought a Transio. So this is what they look like out of the box. This is the Trangia 2723 Ultralight Duo Cell, uh, designated 27-23 Union Lincoln forward slash Delta, or David, depending on which phonetic alphabet you want to use. But this is cool. It's not too heavy. I mean, if you're into ultralight backpacking, you're not going to be using one of these. I've got a Snow Peak Titanium Pot, and I've got a little MSR Whisper Light, or whichever the one is, I forget what it's called, but I bought it for my wife. Super tiny, super lightweight, really nice when I want to go, you know, fast and light. But if I'm only going to be doing like five to ten miles, and I don't mind carrying a couple extra pounds, this will do. Might be able to take one of the saucepans out and uh, maybe even the frying pan if you don't need it. This particular model, as you'll probably come to see, has the non-stick on the frying pan, and then it comes with two saucepans, and of course, the, it's made of the duo cell. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's uh, basically they press together aluminum and stainless. So the cooking surface is gonna be stainless steel, and the outside is gonna be aluminum, and the aluminum, uh, it's a better conductor of the heat, heats up more evenly and faster. And then the stainless is just going to be a lot easier to uh, clean. And uh, you know, if you're familiar with uh, high-end cookware, we've got a couple of all-clad pots and they, you know, basically bed the aluminum inside the stainless and press it all and then form it into pots and it's good stuff. You got to kind of adjust your cooking and learn how to cook with it. You got to get it up to temperature and then add your oil, otherwise you can have problems with sticking. Uh, that's why on this one, I don't want to have to worry about that when I'm backpacking, so I got the one that has the non-stick lid, or correction, non-stick pan. So we'll open that. The other thing that I got, of course, is the, uh, and that's it for that box, the little fuel bottle. So this is kind of nice. I think this is the, I want to say, yep, yeah, 500 mils, 500 milliliters, so good size. I'm guessing something like this could last me three or four days in the backcountry. Uh, fill it up with uh, your alcohol. I've got some of that too. And uh, we're going to go over how this works because I'm not sure. I've never had one before. And then in here, we're going to have our knockoff gas burner. And this is uh, Chinese. You can tell by the bag. It's that kind of junky plastic. You're probably all a little bit familiar with it if you've bought anything cheap off of Amazon over the past few years. But here we've got, comes in its own little bag. It's called Bulin. B-U-L-I-N, Bulin. I think this was 2023, 20, something like that. Uh, I got this just because I've got a bunch of gas canisters and this one has the alcohol burner in it and then I figured while I'm going I might as well get the gas burner as well. The transit burner is about 80 bucks. This one's 20. So probably further down the line I'll get the transit one. 
and we'll compare. I mean, this one pretty much looks exactly like the Trangia. It's got this hose up here. I guess this helps to uh, heat up the gas and make it burn better. Less soot on your stoves, etc. Something like that. Not exactly sure. It's got a little simmer adjustment, so we'll go into that a little bit later. But for now, obviously I opened this a little bit more, otherwise I would have been cutting that little sticker off. So here we have our set. We'll set this stuff aside for now. Now, with the tranges, you can go with uh, the first two designations. So you've got 25 and you've got 27. And the 25 is a little bit bigger, a little bit uh, larger diameter. That one's supposed to be you're cooking for three to four people. This one you're cooking for one to two. In my case, I would say probably cooking closer to one. But you've got your strap with your branding on it. So this particular model does come with the non-stick fry pan. We've got our uh, little handbook here. And from what I've seen, it's got this little plastic disc in here. You want to keep this plastic disc. It helps protect the non-stick coating when you're uh, transporting it around. Piece of packaging. So this looks like our alcohol burner and probably our little, yep, we've got our little lifter. I had one of these in an MSR uh, backpacking uh, cook set from 30 years ago. Stainless steel, I think it was stainless steel, might have been aluminum, but it's got the same exact lifter. These have been around a while, probably familiar with them, and the famous little Trangia burner with the simmer ring and use that to put it out or simmer and then our cap These are great. I've found these in surplus stores and I've used them before good little Reliable alcohol stove if you can find alcohol I can tell you I had a hard time finding alcohol in the winter or two ago. It might have been because of COVID but I was at REI asking the guy about it and he said they finally had some in stock and I bought two big jugs of it. Typical COVID uh, hoarding. Sorry about that, people. If you were having trouble finding it, I bought two. Now we've got our little saucepans. They got the Trangia marking on them. Kind of cool, feels good, sturdy. Kind of. So it's got the aluminum on the outside, stainless on the inside. I think that's. I'm assuming that's it, but this is two layers, good edges, feels good, feels sturdy, well made, definitely not, you know, counterfeit junk. And here we've got the second saucepan. Uh, regarding this product, our unique Super Laminate Duo Sal 2.0 is a combination of two materials in one, aluminum on the outside for good thermal conductivity and stainless steel inside pressed together under high pressure. During production, variations such as wrinkles may occur due to the laminated material in this product. This does not affect the function. Oh yeah, you can see it. There's some little wrinkles up in here. Let's see if we can't focus up on that. Might be able to, uh, maybe not. Focus, focus, there it is. Kind of see it? Just some wrinkles around the lip. Not bad. Now one thing you might consider, I mean I should get out my scale, we could weigh all these. Honestly, if I was out backpacking by myself and I'm used to uh, just using one Snow Peak pot, you don't need to bring both of these. You could probably get by with just one. Uh, frying pan, I mean, good size. You could you know, if you want to get into some deluxe cooking. I honestly have never used a frying pan while backpacking. Maybe I'll try. Sounds like fun. And of course with the Trangy stoves, you've got your stove uh, 
I guess this is the base. I guess the holes you point into the wind. It helps with uh, protecting your flame, I guess. And then this just screws down in place. You got a little, this is gonna protect your flame more. This is gonna be a uh, wind block. Your stove goes in there, your alcohol stove. Take a look at that. Or we've got the gas burner, which feeds through somewhere right here. Yup, yup, doo -doo 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 -doo. Right there. And then we got a gas burner in there. So quicker boils. I think I was reading that uh, we could maybe do an experiment on that later tonight. This is going to take about 10 minutes or so to boil a liter of water, depending on your elevation. This uh, gas burner, maybe three to four minutes. Typical of a performance. One thing I have learned from my research, keep this bag. You want to keep the bag, keep your stove in that. It kind of protects your, uh, protects the inside of the gear from both leaks and from just damage. You don't want to hurt the inside of your pots, although they are stainless steel, so they're probably not going to get that hurt. But, cool. There we go. Trangia. Let's go see what we can get this thing to do. All right, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna peel off the uh, sticker. This is State of California. Puts these on everything now, because basically everything causes cancer and reproductive harm. All right, gas for later. Fuel for cooking stoves, alcohol stoves. Alcohol stove fuel for marine and alcohol stoves. I bought this at REI maybe two years ago. Yep, it's alcohol. This is fun, this is uh, learning with Todd. So we got a little spring-loaded doohickey mechanism. I think that's gonna, I think that that's locked. We'll find out the hard way. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's not too bad. I think that'll suffice for now. I got some on my fingers. Okay, everybody sings songs about how good these are at carrying around your stove fuel. So, looks pretty good. No leaks so far. I would probably carry it upright on the outside of my backpack. I don't know if you've ever had anything leak inside your backpack, but it's no fun. So, alcohol stove, let's see what happens here. Okay, button does not depress while the lid is screwed down. Now the lid is open, nothing still, oh, there we go. It says fill it about two thirds full, it's going to saturate the wick that's in there. I think that's enough for our purposes today. Uh, hold on, I'll be right back. I'm going to go grab a paper towel because I don't want to light the table on fire. All right. I'm going to try lighting this bad boy up. We are going to see how long it takes to boil a liter of water. We'll have a contest, a little race. 
maybe I think these are not even a liter these hold on so we've gone ahead and measured this out backstage and this particular saucepan being the larger of the two I think they're both the same uh, they're, they're nesting but this one holds to the rim one liter now of course you're not going to be cooking with the water filled all the way up to here so I'd say your max usable range probably about 800 mils what I've got in here now is 500 milliliters uh, half a liter about two cups most of your backpacking food or you know if you dehydrate your own like I do sometimes two cups of water will get you about what you need maybe you know you go three quarters or correction three cups which you could probably fit in here if you want to have your hot drink you know have your coffee or your tea but uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, have a little contest and see now we're at sea level here but we're gonna see how long it takes this to boil on an alcohol stove at all right here we are boil test we are at sea level I'm literally two blocks from the Pacific Ocean so we might be 150 feet 100 feet above sea level we're starting 500 milliliters of water about two cups and our starting temp coming right out of my tap is 65.1 degrees Fahrenheit so let's go ahead and light this bad boy I've already got a burn with the Trangia you're gonna fold these down to use the saucepans I probably should have done that beforehand because I've got a blue flame it's already starting to fill up and burn around the sides can you hear that little kind of vaporization sound so we're gonna bop this guy on here and start our stopwatch while we're waiting we can go over the different kinds of Tranja sets. Now, the best thing for me, honestly, was going onto their website. And they've got different numbers. The first two numbers are either going to be a 27 or a 25, and that depends on whether you're going to go with the, the smaller set, this one, which weighs approximately, according to them, 855 grams. I'll weigh that myself later and let you know how that goes. Uh, the 25 five is the larger set now I will tell you right now this is pretty small um, you know if you're I mean if you're just gonna boil water and put it in your backpacking food your you know store-bought bag where you just add the water and eat it out of the out of the bag probably be okay but for for actually making something this is gonna be a pretty small serving even Maybe it'll be a decent bowl of oatmeal, but you know, I'm just saying, personal, I'm a big eater and it looks a little small. I went with the uh, smaller one. We'll have to use it a couple times and see if I'm starving on the trail. As I might have said earlier, it's, uh, I'm kind of a walking contradiction in the words of Walt Whitman because I'm really into camp stoves and I'm really into the concept of cooking good food in the backcountry. But when I get back there, it's usually cliff bars and beef jerky and, you know, shitty Velveeta shells and cheese. Well, I shouldn't say shitty because uh, stuff's actually pretty good. But anyway, let's check in real quick. We've been on here for two minutes. And we are at 95 degrees. Continuing with our further discussion as we wait for water to boil, I'll say one thing. Uh, this is super quiet. You can't hear it. If uh, I know a lot of times when I'm in the backcountry, I, I like the quiet. And honestly, the, the jet of the uh, you know, gas stoves can be kind of annoying. Um, just saying but we're looking at coming up on four minutes and we're at a hundred and thirty degrees right now and 
I can definitely feel the heat coming off this thing. Uh, definitely respectable. I mean, we've got a little bit of steam forming. Uh, as I was saying, this is the 27. It's a smaller one. Then there's the 25s. Then you have the different sets. Now this one is the 27-23. This one didn't come with a kettle. Uh, I don't drink tea. I drink coffee, but in the back country, I drink instant coffee. I don't need a tea kettle. It would be nice if I had one. I probably wouldn't carry it anyway, so I didn't get one. I'll probably carry just one pot with this thing, honestly, one of the saucepans. I'd be surprised if I even brought the frying pan, honestly. I don't see myself frying anything in the back country. But they have different numbers to designate, you know, the different metals. This is an ultralight. It's a duo cell. Uh, some of them are standard weight. Some of them are all aluminum. Uh, some of them come with a kettle. Some of them don't. Some of them have the nonstick on everything. This one just has the nonstick on the fry pan. So you can go onto the Trangio website, and it's actually pretty nifty. I found it pretty useful. You can look at, you know, the, the kind of what you're looking for, and you can really fine-tune it which is nice, you know, it's nice having options. There's something about being able to uh, pick out exactly what you want. We're at five minutes, 40 seconds. We're starting to definitely see some little bubbles forming. I'm looking at about one, almost 180. So this is, you know, not bad. You're in the back country, you're not in a terrible hurry. You don't need your water boiling in three minutes flat. But this is definitely getting hot. I'm having a hard time holding my hand just at this level. We're at 180, 182, 83, 85. It's firing right up. We're at about six minutes. And, you know, as I said, about 10 to 12 minutes to boil a liter. So I think we're about on schedule, a little bit behind schedule. And if you were up at a higher elevation, it would be probably boiling by now because of the pressure difference and the fact that water boils faster at a lower temperature. But right now we're at 192. Like I said, we're at sea level, 193. I'm already seeing some bubbles coming around the side. So that's that aluminum. You know, the aluminum's heating up all the way around. And so this, it's not just on the bottom that's hot. It's this whole saucepan that's hot, which is kind of nice. Looking at seven minutes, 199. We're at 200. So we got 12 degrees to go, but I'm seeing bubbles starting to burst on the bottom. Seven minutes. Just in the interest of scientific accuracy, we will go all the way to a boil. And we'll go with our end time shortly. We're at 205. 206. I mean, if you can see the side here, we are we have a boil. We're pretty much at a rolling boil. So it might be that my calculator, my thermometer isn't, my thermopin isn't exactly accurate, but we're looking at about 740 right now, and I've got a rolling boil here. So that is pretty cool, I will say. I like that. So as you know, we, we didn't fill that stove up with very much alcohol at all. It's still burning pretty good. You can see that in the daylight. I like it. I'm not going to lie. I like it a lot. That's pretty cool. So, seven minutes. I think I said 7.30, 7.40. That's a rolling boil. Now, here's the other thing for putting doubt. Got this cap. They say do not use this because you've got a, a rubber o-ring that seals it up in there you don't want that alcohol leaking around everywhere so you got to protect the integrity of that o-ring anybody who knows about the space shuttle challenger and richard Feynman, you know about protecting the integrity of these o-rings so we're going to see if we can't uh put it out with this i'm not sure what this is this doesn't seem oh i guess it's metal all right i did see a guy on youtube who had a little magnet and he was using a magnet to drop this but We'll try not to burn ourselves. Oh, kind of. There we go. It's out. Very good. I don't know. Okay, so the first part, so the first part of our uh, little cook-off is uh, completed. 
we got our water boiled, we got our uh, alcohol burner. That's still pretty hot. You know, it's just like when you're at the restaurant and tell you, don't touch the hot plate, it's very hot. And you go, yeah, I know. And then you touch it anyway. It's not too bad. I don't know how I'm gonna get this thing out. See how long that takes to cool down. Well, obviously if you're camping, hey, there you go, we found another use for it. Okay, we're gonna try the gas, the gas burner that we got off of Amazon. It is the Bulin. Bulin. So one thing that I've seen a lot of, especially in the last couple of years, is these, uh, you know, one thing that China is really good at is taking a quality product that somebody else makes and, you know, the their labor and their, you know, all the laws are so much more, such a laxity on laws, environmental, uh, labor, uh, they can produce the same exact thing for way cheaper. Back in the day, I was making, I was working with composites, uh, laying up paddles, stand-up paddles, outrigger paddles, and uh, we were really freaked out because we found a Chinese counterfeit that was floating around Southern California shortly, you know, maybe a year or two. So somebody obviously had taken the paddles that we were selling for, it was Jim Terrell and Quick Blade. I think he was selling them for about 350 and uh, somebody brought us a counterfeit one that they had bought for a lot cheaper and we cut it open and looked at it and they basically basically just cut ours open and looked at how we did it and uh, stole the idea and started making their own so that's what China's good at you know and this honestly if, if you were to tell me this was a Trangia I would probably believe it it doesn't have the marking but I mean it feels like a good piece of equipment we've got you know stainless braided cable here got our little rubber o-ring we've got a little simmer dial so we're gonna test this out this looks exactly like the Trangia ones I haven't seen a Trangia in person but I've seen them online and you know one thing that I have heard is people complain about these edges on the Trangia being sharp you could slice your finger on them but this one's not sharp at all I mean it's it feels like good quality control. Everything's tight. The metal looks good. It's not crappy metal. It's it's good stainless, it looks like. It's got a good polish on it. This looks like a good brass tube. I mean, everything feels, you know, I can see a weld right here. Or not a weld, but probably a solder. I'm not sure. Maybe it's a weld? I don't know, but it looks good. I mean, very good, to be honest. Uh, we'll give this thing a shot. We'll see how it how it works out. Like I said, it's a Bulin from Amazon, and we'll do a little boil test. We'll see how this one works. In the interest of fairness, I will eventually get the Trangia gas burner. But I mean, after what we just saw with the alcohol stove, I honestly don't see any reason why I wouldn't just carry this. You know, if we were to, of course, you know, this and this compared to this and this, I guess we could have a little way off and see, but first we'll do our boil test. All right, we're back. We've got our gas burner sitting on the base. We've got our windscreen up. Of course, we're not doing this out in the open. We're doing this in my living room. 500 milliliters of water. I uh, cooled the pan down so that, you know, in the interest of strict fairness, we all know this is going to boil faster. Let's just see how good it really is. So, uh, poof. this is going to be interesting. Let's see. Well, they got the thread right. Yep, there's our little burst of propane. Yep, there's that smell of isobutane or whatever. This is good, probably clear the area of everything flammable. And let's 
see. It's my first time lighting it, so uh, if this doesn't work out, tell my wife I love you. I love you, Shelby. Woo! All right. We've got a flame. Definitely adjustable. So I guess in the interest of competition, we'll go max. So uh, let's. Test has begun. Boop. All right. What was our starting temp, Todd? 66. So about a degree warmer. It's already come up a degree or two. So. Ain't gonna lie, it's pretty good. 20 bucks. Would I wanna take it with me in the back country and have this be my only way of heating up food? Eh, I'd probably be a little worried. I know I had a uh, water bladder that I got from Amazon. It was a Wacool uh, while we're waiting. Had that up, me and my brother recently hiked up to Panamint, and my whack cool uh, leaked all over the place one night. And we were in Death Valley, and as you probably can imagine, it was in the winter time, and there was we were hiking in Surprise Canyon, and there's plenty of water sources. But you can imagine if we were anywhere else where water is kind of critical, you want about a gallon of water per day, and I had a three liter bladder and that thing burst at the bottom, so there would have been no way for me to carry water. And uh, in the interest of fairness, I did contact them when I got back and I told them what happened, and they sent me a brand new one in about four days. But if the brand new one breaks, what's the point? And that's one of the dangers of buying these knockoff uh, overseas counterfeit kind of, you know, they steal the idea, and. They get a lot of it right, but I think there might still be some things wrong. So, trust this thing with your life? No, it probably bring something extra, or you might just cook over a fire if you're somewhere where you can have a fire. I know in California, you can't have fires in the backcountry anywhere now, because they're afraid everything's gonna burn down. But one thing you might notice, this thing is loud, much louder than the alcohol stove. If you want the comfort of a jet engine blowing you know can't have fires you can have a howling gas stove or you can have a nice quiet alcohol stove and you know sit there with your thoughts not sure what you want to go with we're already seeing bubbles up here we're at two minutes and 30 seconds of my blathering and we're already at 170 172 right now so yeah pretty good that's pretty rapid. Coming up on three, 2.45. So, again, Trangia. We'll weigh it out when we're done with all this just to uh, let everybody know. Uh, this is my entry to the world of Trangia. Kind of happy with it. I might do a couple other videos about all my other backpack cooking potential, potentialities. Uh, we're at 195, 196, 197, 198, three minutes and uh, mark, three minutes, 20 seconds. We're at 200, we're getting the bubbles. Bubbles are not coming up around the sides as much as they were with the alcohol stove. That's interesting. I wonder if the alcohol stove kind of goes a little bit further around. We're at a boil right now, so that's 335 about so. And this one's a lot easier. Turn the knob and you're done. So at sea level, we're at 212 boiling. Uh, of course, at elevation, you'd probably want to go another minute or two to get it up to proper temperature. But there you have it. Not bad. It worked. I mean, it didn't blow up. We're still here. So, hey, congratulations. All right, continuing. I was reading here on the uh, yellow bag the, for the spirit burner. Uh, of course, uh, 
they, they call these storm cookers in England, which I kind of like the idea. This is my Trangia storm cooker. And this is a spirit burner, or a sprit branda, sprit branare, quemador de alcohol. Uh, I'm just butchering this. Uh, one thing, what I'm reading here, uh, best results, minimum fuel consumption will be obtained in a sheltered position. Of course, this you know, windscreen is going to shelter you a little bit, but turn the air holes in the lower windshield towards the wind. So there's a little tip for you. Lower the hooks in the upper windshield when using, so this is the lower windshield and this is the upper windshield. There we go. Good to know. Proper uh, nomenclature. Raise the hooks when using the frying pan. Lower the hooks when using the, they call these cooking utensils, but these are gonna be pots, saucepans, whatever. Uh, for the sake of I, th I think it took about four minutes for these things to cool down enough for me to handle. So if you've got, you know, angry Sasquatch telling you to split and you got to pack up everything, you don't want to be like that guy that just leaves everything in the woods and never, never goes back and get it. Angry Sasquatch, you know, barking from the trees and knocking down stuff. You want to get out of there quick. Four minutes. Can you handle it? Can you, can you pass the test? I don't know. It's up to you. It's between you and him or her. Uh... Five centiliters of fuel will boil one liter of water in 10 to 15 minutes. One filling of the burner and filling, by filling, they need maximum two thirds of its height. I think I got about halfway up it. So uh, one filling, two thirds high, will burn for about 25 minutes. So, and then one thing here that might be new that we might experiment with to avoid sitting on your pans Dilute the fuel with 10 or max 15% water. Fuel, methylated spirits, not petrol. And what we were using is, uh, I, I would need to go and get my glasses to be perfectly honest. I can't tell you what this says. I used to think it was denatured alcohol, fuel for alcohol stoves. So, but it doesn't exactly, clean burning fuel, directions for use, contains methanol and ethanol. So this could be methylated spirits. It's probably the same thing based on the uh, prefixes. But we've got our stove, uh, four minutes to cool down. Where was I going with this? Oh, yeah. Sitting, but we've got no sitting. That's good. Maybe it's just the fuel. I'm not sure. There might be. I used to buy denatured alcohol from you know the hardware store and use that. This is methylated methanol and ethanol. But I've got no soot, which is good. I think that all depends on you know your mileage may vary depending on what fuels you use. But let's go ahead and weigh these things out. We're going to get this one all back together while we're waiting. This gas burner by itself is coming in at 173 grams, aka six ounces for us Americans. So six ounces. And we'll get this all put together. This is sans fuel, of course. And we're gonna go to metric system, zero it out. 861, 861 grams, that's six grams more than they say on the box. Package says 855. That might be that plastic bag in there. Not sure, not sure. Oh, maybe it could even be this little disc. Who knows? Uh, just for sake of argument's sake, oh, hold on, we got to do it in English slash American units, we go to pounds, all together not bad, one pound 14 and a quarter ounces as packaged, so you're under two pounds, not bad.
I mean, I can handle an extra pound. I think we could all handle an extra pound. We're not shaving that much weight when we're trying to travel light. It's weird, it feels like more than two pounds to me, but hey, there you go. So there you have it, Trangia 27 Duo Sal, no kettle, because I'm American and I, I, I like tea, but I don't drink it on the regular, I drink a lot of coffee. Uh, little bottle, little gas burner, not a bad little setup really, I like it. Hope you like it too. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm not going to ask you to like it. I'm not going to ask you to subscribe. Because I don't rely on this for any income. I'm just doing this for fun. I'm doing this because I want to share what I know about this stuff with you guys. So, again, my name is Todd. Welcome to my channel. Enjoy my backpacking, my Panamint trip with my brother. I've got some piano playing. <coughs> I've got a, uh, a diving video with the life aquatic underwater stuff uh, it should be coming out soon so bye bye hope you guys have a good day have a good week and uh yeah that's all i got